Today, we're performing a fundamental stock analysis of Deere and Company, ticker symbol DE. So the business, better known as John Deere, is currently trading for $385.50 per share. Over the past year, their stock price is down 5%, but this is actually outpacing the S&P 500, which has declined by 10% over the same time frame. So we're analyzing the business to understand what are we missing? What could the market have possibly discovered about this business that's led to this outperformance? Over the last five years, John Deere is also outperforming the market. They're compounding their stock price at a rate of 20.5% annually. Over 10 years, this is also the case. John Deere stock price is up 17% compounded annually. And going back prior to the global financial crisis, John Deere stock price is still beating the market. Over the past 18 years, they're compounding their stock price at just under 15% annually. Keep in mind that the company also pays out dividends, and currently they have about a 1.1% dividend yield. One thing to note here is that the business has had a major run-up in their stock price since spring of 2020, so a lot of their outperformance has come from both their more recent results and their more recent valuation. Currently, Deering Company is trading between its 52-week high and its 52-week low. The company is about $60 below its 52-week high, and they're about $100 above their 52-week low. Deering Company has very little short interest around the business, and they are a very large business. They have a $114 billion market cap. For more background about the business, Deere is the world's leading manufacturer of agricultural equipment, producing some of the most recognizable machines in the heavy machinery industry. The company is divided into four reportable segments, production and precision agriculture, small agriculture and turf, construction and forestry, and John Deere Capital. Its products are available through an extensive dealer network, which includes over 2,000 dealer locations in North America and approximately 3,700 locations globally. John Deere Capital provides retail financing for machinery to its customers, in addition to wholesale financing for dealers, which increases the likelihood of Deere product sales. Deering Company was founded in 1837 and is headquartered in Moline, Illinois. Our fundamental analysis will be using the Select 6 analysis, taking a checklist-style approach of six standard financial metrics to come to a holistic and beginning understanding of Deering Company based off of their business fundamentals. So this analysis is still a work in progress, and it's an opportunity to learn in public, so it will continue to improve and get better over time. Let's get right into our first metric. Starting things off with metric number one, we want their average return on capital over the last five years to be above 14%. And there are two major reasons for this. The first is that over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock is likely to return approximately what its underlying business returns, and these business returns will be captured here by return on capital. The second is that the average publicly listed business earns about a 7% return on capital, so by looking for a benchmark of 14% or higher, we can potentially build in some margin of safety for ourselves based off the overall quality of the business being about twice as good as average. So John Deere's return on capital has been increasing over this time frame. The business's returns on capital have increased, especially since 2020. Over their last 12 months, John John Deere's earning about a 15% return on capital, however averaged out over these last five years, even with their increases in their return on capital, Deere is averaging about a 9.5% average return on capital, while those returns are a couple of percentage points above those of a typical business. This is going to be below that 14% threshold, and so this is an X here starting things off on metric number one for Deere. Next up for metric number two, here we're taking a high level overview of the growth of their business. So we're looking for revenue, net income, and free cash flow growth over the past five years. We'll also be including their last 12 months worth of numbers in our calculations. And this metric is all or nothing. Either all three of these are up for this to be a check, or if even one of these is down, this entire metric will be an X. So over this period, John Deere has grown their revenues by almost 50%. Their earnings have more than tripled, and they've taken their free cash flows from being negative in fiscal 2018 and fiscal 2019 to now they are positive today, and they've been positive over their last three years. Over their last 12 months, John Deere has produced about $2 billion worth of free cash flow. Their free cash flow growth in particular is great because free cash flow is the lifeblood of any business, and ultimately, a business's abilities to produce free cash flows now and until judgment day, discounted back by some reasonable interest rate, is what that business is likely to be worth. A business can use its free cash flow in a handful of ways so they can pay dividends, buy back shares, make acquisitions, reinvest back in the business, or pay down debt. So with all three of these being up, this will be our first check of the day coming in here on metric number two for Deer. 
Next up, metric number three, here we're taking the perspective of an individual shareholder in the business by looking at Deer on a per share basis. So we're looking for earnings per share growth over the past five years for the business. As we just learned, Deer has tripled their earnings over this time frame. However, earnings are just one part of this equation. We also want to look at what they've done in terms of their shares outstanding and likely a strong sign for long-term shareholders in the business. Deer has repurchased 7% of their shares over this time frame. So this is important because when you purchase a share of stock, which you're really buying, is a fractional ownership percentage in that underlying business. And so when a company buys back shares, they're increasing your ownership percentage in the business, which will ultimately increase the percentage of the business's profits that you're entitled to without you having to spend a dime. So it's almost as if the company is making a partial acquisition of itself. And just like with any other acquisition, we want the business to be getting more value than the price that they're paying. In practical terms, there are a couple of factors that will help determine this, including the price that these buybacks were occurring at and what a potential fair intrinsic value for the business would be. Stick around for one of the most useful parts of this video where we analyze John Deere using a discounted cash flow analysis to come to a potential fair intrinsic value for the business. With their big earnings growth and their share buybacks, this is a check here on metric number three as the business has strongly grown their earnings per share. Metric number four, here we're looking for free cash flow per share growth over the past five years. This is similar to our prior metric, and as we learned, their free cash flows have grown from being negative to now they are positive. And with the company's share buybacks, this is strong free cash flow per share growth for Deer. This is another check here on metric number four, our third check in a row. And so far through our first four metrics, we have three checks and one X for the business. There's a vital piece missing of what we've analyzed so far. So you might think that nailing above average returns on capital and having strong per share growth is the key to being a wonderful business. But we haven't touched on the one thing that I believe sets wonderful businesses apart which is having these characteristics without employing a lot of debt. So here for metric number five, we want Deere's net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments, to be below the amount of free cash flow that the business has produced over their last five years. So we don't wanna be investing in overly levered businesses because during economic downturns, it's overly levered businesses that are likely at the greatest risk of poor outcomes. Currently, Deere has $52.2 billion worth of net debt. This is an asset intensive business, so it makes sense that the company is utilizing a lot of debt. However, we want to look at what their free cash flows are like. And over the last five years, Deer has only produced $9.7 billion worth of free cash flow. Even for an asset heavy business, this is well below the amount of debt that the company is employing. And Deer has been cash flow positive in only three of these five years. So this is an X on metric number five. If this is a potential concern and you're interested in learning more, you can dig into their debt profile in more detail by reading through the company's filings. They'll break out how this debt is structured, when it matures, what rates it's at, and if the debt has particular covenants attached to it. So that information is available in their filings. Next up for our sixth metric, the big metric of them all, we want their average free cash flow to their total enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this may provide us with a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury and may offer us a reasonable starting point for evaluation of DEER. As we just learned, Deer has produced just under $10 billion worth of free cash flow over their last five years. And in an average year, Deer is producing about $1.9 billion of free cash flow. Currently, Deer has a $166 billion total enterprise value. We're using their enterprise value because it takes into account both their market cap and their net debt position. So it'll give us a perspective of the business that's more similar to as if Deer were a private company. So when we divide the business's $1.9 billion of their average free cash flow by their $166 $66 billion total enterprise value. That only gives us about a 1.1% average free cash flow to enterprise value yield. So this is an X here on metric number six for Deer. Keep in mind that we still want to perform a discounted cash flow analysis of the business, but we have a bonus metric to cover before we get into that. And worth being aware of here is that the business currently has a 1.2% current free cash flow to enterprise value yield. And just because this is an X here on metric number six doesn't mean that you're going to toss this business out in its entirety. While these metrics are simple, when they're combined together, they can be very powerful. And this is not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. Then as our bonus here, we're looking at Deer's dividend profile. So Deer currently has a 1.15% dividend yield, which is below the dividend yield that you'd be receiving from an S&P 500 ETF currently. But Deer has has increased their dividend payouts in all five of these years, and people make mistakes all the time by blindly chasing dividends. We want to look to see whether their dividends are healthy and supported by the business's free cash flows because of the type of business that John Deere is. In terms of their dividends, Deere has only supported their payouts with their cash flows in two of these five years. 
numbers coming in their fiscal 2020 and their fiscal 2021. And the company has had pretty lumpy free cash flows over this time frame. As in the years where they did not support their dividends with their free cash flows, they were quite below their dividend payouts. But in these two years where they did support their dividends, albeit they did dramatically support those dividends, they had a very modest dividend payout ratio below 25% of their free cash flows in both of these years. So there's the potential for the business that their dramatic outperformance during their good years could make up for some of these bad years, even though they've been steadily increasing their dividends throughout. Again, the business is using a high amount of leverage, especially to their free cash flows over this time. So it seems like there's a potential risk here with their dividend. If you're curious and you want to dig in to learn more, you can read through some of the company's recent earnings call reports to get a better understanding of management's approach to capital allocation going forward into the future. Everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that in my opinion is the main reason to analyze DEER, which takes us on to using a discounted cash flow model to come to a potential fair intrinsic value for DEER. A discounted cash flow model is based off the predictability of a business's free cash flows, and it's just like any other model in any other discipline, its output will be sensitive to its inputs. So here we're starting with an average of the company's free cash flows over their last three years to potentially give a more normalized perspective of the business's abilities to produce free cash flows. Then we're using historical growth assumptions dating back all the way till 1990 in order to project these out into the future. So it's up to you to do your own homework here to determine whether or not these historical growth assumptions will be accurate and applicable going forward to give us a baseline projected estimate for John Deere. So if we assume that the business grows their average free cash flows at a rate of just under 8% annually for the next 10 years, then during the 10 years out after that, that this growth rate would be cut in half and they'd be growing their free cash flows at a rate of 4% annually. Then we're going to add in the company's tangible book value, which will give us an estimate of the business's tangible net worth. Keep in mind that this is likely skewed based off how the accounting is done for share buybacks, especially given that John Deere has repurchased around 40% of their shares outstanding since the late 1990s. So in your deeper work to learn more about the business, you may want to make an adjustment to this tangible book value. If we were seeking a 15% rate of return, which is the rate of return that Warren Buffett is looking for in addition to his margin of safety requirements for a company, then it looks like at today's current valuations of Deere that a reasonable fair intrinsic value for the business is right around $143 per share. So that is down significantly from what their current stock price is. It would seem that their stock price would be cut in half and then some. There are several things you'll want to keep in mind here. One is that their dividend yield would be included in this rate of return. So although it wouldn't be making up a large percentage of this rate of return, we would not be doubly counting their dividend here. Very importantly is that Deer has had a low level of business predictability, especially in their recent past where we saw such lumpy free cash flows for the business. So this fair value could be less accurate for the business than some other types of businesses due to this lower predictability. Then finally, please be mindful of the fact that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with your financial advisor. In just a minute, we'll talk about our summary for Deer, but we have to address something first. What are some of the qualitative aspects of this business? Starting with some of the key qualitative aspects that support a potential long thesis of the business. Number one, increased infrastructure spending in the United States and emerging markets will likely lead to more construction equipment purchases benefiting deer. Number two, deer will likely benefit from strong replacement demand as uncertainty around trade, weather, and agriculture commodity demand has eased, potentially encouraging farmers to refresh their machine fleet. And number three, higher crop prices encourage farmers to grow more crops and will likely lead to more farming equipment purchases, substantially boosting deer's revenue growth. Then for some of the key qualitative aspects supporting a potential short thesis of the business, number one, deer faces stiff competition from global competitors across end markets, growing competition could pressure Deere's market share. Number two, trade tensions between developed economies could escalate to punitive tariffs on agricultural commodity imports, reducing the demand for farmers' crops in certain countries. And number three, China could pull back on agriculture imports, weakening global demand for crops. The fallout would lead to lower crop prices, largely due to higher supply, pushing farmers to delay equipment purchases. Hopefully that offers a balanced perspective around some of the qualitative aspects of the business. Now it's time for a summary. Deer checks the box on three of our six metrics today, meaning that the company looks like a moderate candidate for further research. 
While Deer is earning above average returns on capital, they're just slightly above those of a typical business and solidly below that benchmark we're looking for. The company's grown their revenues, earnings, and free cash flows over the past five years, and they bought back 7% of their shares. However, the business does look like it's using a lot of debt, especially relative to their free cash flows, so that could be a potential concern. Also, the business seems to have a very slight average free cash flow and current free cash flow to enterprise value yield, and that's coming in well below the yield of the 10-year treasury. Deer's dividend profile looked pretty lumpy, even though the business has grown their dividends in all five years. Their free cash flows only supported their dividends in two of these five years, but they did massively support those dividends, so they potentially make up for that in some of these other years. It's likely worth your while to dig in, though, if you're potentially interested in this business for its abilities to return capital to shareholders through dividends. Finally, performing a discounted cash flow analysis of Deer, if you've done the work and you believe that those historical growth assumptions will be accurate and applicable going forward for the business, and you are seeking a 15% rate of return, then it looks like at today's current valuations of Deer, that a reasonable fair intrinsic value for the business is right around $143 per share. It looks like more recently that the closest that Deer traded around those levels was back in spring of 2020. There are the reasons we mentioned why this may not be accurate for the business. So it's both worth doing this deeper research and it's worth reiterating that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with your financial advisor. Instead, this analysis serves as a beginning and holistic understanding to help you determine whether it's worth your time and energy to dig in and learn more about Deer & Company. So with that said, we performed a fundamental stock analysis of Deer & Company, ticker symbol DE, which we looked at because it's outperformed the average of the S&P 500 over the last year. The business looks like it has moderate attractiveness for further research. And if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for learning about John Deere with me, and have a great day.